Good evening, everyone. I'm Professor Barlow Dermogradician with the Armenian Studies Program. I'd like to welcome you to uh, this evening's presentation. Uh, our presentation this evening is part of the Armenian Studies Program Spring Lecture Series, but is also part of the Arts in Motion Showcase Week of the College of Arts and Humanities. And tomorrow, the College of Arts and Humanities will be holding its Arts in Motion virtual program beginning at 2 p.m. And you can go to their website at Fresno State, uh, the College of Arts and Humanities, if you would like to join that uh, event uh, tomorrow. This evening, I'd like to start off by just telling you a little bit about some of our upcoming events. I'd like to share the screen and tell you a little bit about what's uh, coming up this week. And we have uh, several, several really interesting events coming up within about a week and a half. So I'll tell you a little bit about them. Uh, next Thursday, April the 15th, I will be speaking on a conversation on the 106th anniversary of the Armenian Genocide. And this is part of the Scottsdale Community College Genocide Awareness Week. And this is its ninth annual event uh, that we used to go to Scottsdale for uh, in-person presentations. But this time it will be done uh, through a Zoom webinar beginning at Thursday, April the 15th at 10 o'clock in the morning. Uh, and actually there's a whole week of activities dealing with uh, all different types of Holocaust, the Holocaust dealing with genocides in other areas of the world. And it's really a very interesting week uh, as you're uh, taking a look at it. That's the Genocide Awareness Week. Following that, on Friday, April the 16th at 5.30 p.m., the Armenian Studies Program, Cineculture, and the Center for Creativity and the Arts are jointly sponsoring a film showing called The Last Inhabitant and a discussion with the director, Jivan Avatisyan. Actually, uh, what this is, is you'll be watching the movie uh, during this week from April 9th till the 16th. And then on the uh, evening of the 16th at 5.30 p.m., will be joined by the director, Jivan Avedisya. And the movie is about uh, the Karabakh War, uh, and not this current war, but about an earlier period in this war. And it's a very interesting story of an Armenian family and their being the last inhabitants of the village in which they're, uh, they're living. And then on Wednesday, April the 28th, at four o'clock in the afternoon, uh, there'll be a presentation on a new book, which was just published uh, by the Armenian Studies Program, by the Armenian Series of the Press at California State University, Fresno. It's called Armenian American Sketches. This is being hosted by the Krikor and Clara Zorab Information Center based in New York at the diocese, the Armenian Studies Program and the Society for Armenian Studies. And we're gonna have our guest editors and translators and contributors to this volume who will be speaking about this really very interesting book uh, Bedros Keljuk uh, wrote this book originally in Armenian. It was translated to English, and it represents uh, about 28 stories from the early period of Armenian immigration to the United States. And it gives us a really good view of uh, what's happening in the Armenian community in the United States. It's humorous, it's, it's interesting, it, it provides us a, an insight into really all of the challenges faced by immigrants, whether in the early 20th century or, or later. Uh, you can always follow us on Facebook uh, at Armenian Studies uh, Fresno State. And you can also go to our website at the Armenian Studies Program uh, to find out about our upcoming uh, events. Now this evening, uh, the goal of our uh, presentation, my presentation will be to talk about Armenian architecture uh, and in particular, Armenian church architecture. So what I'm going to do is to give a presentation. At the end of the presentation, you'll have the opportunity to uh, ask me some questions using the chat function at the bottom of your screen. Uh, if you have questions, you can be writing them actually during uh, the presentation. And then following, uh, following the presentation, I will be able to answer uh, questions for you as we're taking a look at it. So I'm gonna share that uh, screen uh, with you. So the, the name of tonight's talk again is the title of, uh, let me do that again. The title of today's talk is The Arts of Armenia, Armenian Architecture. As I mentioned earlier, this is part of the Arts in Motion Showcase Week 
uh, for the College of Arts and Humanities at Fresno State. Tonight, what I'm going to be doing is talking to you about Armenian architecture and giving you an overview of uh, Armenian church architecture. When you say Armenian architecture, you're going to say, well, there's all different kinds of buildings we could study, fortresses, bridges, uh, all different kinds of buildings. But for Armenian architecture, uh, church architecture has the primary place. And that's uh, because it is still in existence in a large degree. And churches are actually very large examples of architecture. So tonight, my presentation is going to focus on Armenian uh, church architecture and about the Armenian national style of architecture, which I will be explaining in just a few moments. As far as art historians go, they have paid more attention to Armenian church architecture than to other uh, types of art within the Armenian culture, again, primarily because of its uh, role in the Armenian church as part of the Christian religion of the Armenians and as being, again, the, the oversized art, meaning it's, it's large, it's easy to see and, and easy to look at. So tonight, uh, we'll be looking at uh, the ancient area of Armenia, uh, even to the period of Tigran the Great, an early Armenian uh, king and emperor. Uh, and you see noted here an area which is called Greater Armenia, which I'm going to outline. Most of the monuments that we will look at tonight will be within the outline of this, uh, of this area, which is called Greater Armenia. But before we can actually look at Armenian church architecture, today we're also going to be looking at architecture from the pre-Christian era. This is a map of uh, today's Armenia. Uh, highlighted on here would be uh, the religious capital of the Armenians, which we'll be looking at a little bit later, uh, Holy Etchmiadzin. But there are uh, other areas, many other areas in today's Republic of Armenia, uh, of course, that have Armenian uh, churches. I think one of the most important things we have to start with is to really look at the scope of what we mean by Armenian church architecture. And there are some numbers which really give us uh, pause to think, uh, because they're just amazing numbers if you, if you think about it. And I'm gonna go down over here to the total number of Armenian churches. And this is really in the period, this is really in the period of the late 19th to the early 20th century. You see that there are more than 3,780 Armenian churches which had been built over the period of the almost 2000 years of Armenian uh, Christianity. In particular, if you look at the, uh, Armenians in the Ottoman Empire, the Armenian churches within the Ottoman Empire, we can see that at one time there was many as 1,634, but today, really 1954, but uh, today less than, less than 40, which if you look at it means that only 2% of the entire uh, Armenian churches in Ottoman Turkey have survived after the Armenian genocide. So this gives you an idea of the tremendous uh, cultural impact of the Armenian genocide. Uh, and many would argue that that's continuing today with what's happening in Azerbaijan uh, and in Karabakh in, in that area. Uh, but we can also look in other areas as well. In particular, we can take a look at the Catholic state of Akhtamar, which at one time had 272 churches under its jurisdiction. And today there are really no functioning churches uh, left in that, in that area. But the reason that I'm pointing this out to you is that the really large number of Armenian churches means there's going to be a great diversity in Armenian church architecture. And therefore, we're going to look for commonalities uh, in Armenian church architecture. So our art historians generally organize uh, Armenian churches in two different ways. One is by style, using uh, different examples of church styles, dome basilica, radiating style, cruciform style, or they can be organized by when the churches were constructed. And there are two early periods in Armenian church construction. The first begins in the late fourth century to the late seventh century. There was a period of interruption when the Arab empire uh, conquered most of Armenia. And then uh, there was a sort of renaissance of Armenian church building in the 9th to 11th century. 
under some of the Armenian kingdoms, such as the Bagratuni and the Arjun. So today, again, we're going to be looking at uh, the commonalities in Armenian church architecture. And I'm going to be looking at four elements of what is going to be called the Armenian national style of architecture. That is, that by looking at these four elements in Armenian churches, uh, they will form a distinctive style, which generally is very easily recognizable by anyone when they're looking at a, a, at a church. It's easy to recognize that they're Armenian churches. So what are these four elements? Number one, the use of stone in construction of churches. Uh, in Armenian churches, uh, they are primarily constructed out of volcanic tufa stone or volcanic basalt. I'll, I'll show you an example of those a little bit later. Secondly, it's a preference for vaulted ceilings in the design of Armenian churches. Again, the universal use of domes in church construction by the late 6th and 7th century, and from that period forward, uh, it's universally accepted that domes are used in, in Armenian churches. And a fourth element is the use of composite roofs. So tonight's presentation will take a look at Armenian architecture uh, through the lens of these four elements as we together explore Armenian church architecture. So why did Armenians choose to use stone and not wood or brick? Uh, well, one of the reasons is that stone was abundant in Armenia while wood was often scarce. Um, and the most common two forms of stone are the two that you see, tufa and basalt, which are actually products or byproducts of volcanoes. So in the cooling period, when a volcanic magma or lava, it cools, it forms different igneous rocks. Among those are tufa and basalt. And volcanic tufa stone is pretty easy to cut when it's freshly quarried. And that's a really good thing. And it has the quality that it becomes stronger over time when it's exposed to air. So uh, this is uh, why we can see and we will see that uh, in Armenian churches, the primary construction technique will be to use stone. But this actually predates uh, Christian architecture. And today I'm going to use uh, two examples of pre-Christian architecture to illustrate the, uh, the fact that Armenian architecture, Christian architecture, has elements that have uh, survived from the pre-Christian period. And my first example in the pre-Christian period will be the fortress at a place called Yerepuni. This was a fortress uh, built in the kingdom of Urartu, sometimes called the kingdom of Van, in the eighth century BC. Today, it's uh, actually located in, uh, amidst the modern city of Yerevan, which is the capital of Armenia. Let's take an aerial view of the fortress. Uh, from the aerial view, you can actually see that there's not much left. Uh, and actually, this fortress was not really um, excavated until the 20th century. Uh, but we can kind of rebuild it. And this is what a uh, sort of a rebuilt model of, of the um, fortress looks like. But one of the most important parts of this fortress, uh, which was built during the period of the Urartian kingdom, 9th century to 6th century, was this inscription, which tells us in the Urartian cuneiform, it tells us uh, when, when Urartian monuments were built. But today I'm going to focus on the remaining walls of what is called the Temple of Yerepuni. And this illustrates the first point that I would like to make, uh, which is the use of large cut stone, large cut stone, which becomes the basis for uh, the building of monumental buildings in Armenia. Of course, this is uh, some 1,000 years more plus earlier than when Armenian churches were built. But the idea that structures could be built out of volcanic stone would continue until Armenian church architecture. The second uh, really outstanding example of Armenian architecture, uh, pre-Christian, is the Temple of Garni, constructed uh, perhaps in the first century AD in what is called the Greco-Roman style. And we can compare it to the earlier Parthenon, uh, which was built in Greece, in Athens, which predates it by some uh, five centuries. Uh, this is the classical Greek style of architecture. And the Temple of Garni, 
uh, is located in an area of Armenia, which is particularly subject to earthquakes. In 1679, uh, the temple of Garni was completely destroyed. And the picture you see actually dates from the early 20th century. So, you know, there was really not much there uh, at this temple, but it was partially rebuilt beginning in the 1970s. This is located also in the modern Republic of Armenia. And this is the reconstructed temple of Garni. Now, looking at this a little bit closer, you can begin to see some interesting aspects of the construction, the reconstruction. And in particular, uh, you see the lighter areas, which seem to be kind of gray in color. Those are areas which were recast out of concrete. So the original building stones were destroyed. And so the architects in rebuilding it recast those in concrete. But you have other areas which maintain the original stone, which is primarily basalt in our, uh, in our example here. And this is the only freestanding Greco-Roman style temple remaining in all of Armenia. Uh, and uh, primarily this is because most of the temples were destroyed in the period when Armenian Christianity uh, was uh, beginning. Now, again, what I'm sh showing you is a continuity in the construction techniques using stone. Okay. Now we're gonna talk a little bit about uh, the vaulted ceiling, which is a second aspect of Armenian church architecture. A vaulted ceiling is a series of self-supporting arches above walls, I'll, I will show this to you. And it becomes very prevalent in Armenian church architecture. So this is what really a vaulted ceiling looks like. And you can really see it's a series of arches which are then connected, which means that when you're standing inside the structure and you're looking up, the central axis would be the highest point. And therefore you also get a sense of space. Uh, but the byproduct of this is the, the solving or, or the solution of how to support all of this weight. And it has to be done through, uh, through the architecture that we're gonna be looking at. And I'll show you a couple of examples of vaulted ceilings. But vaulted ceilings become, uh, again, common in all Armenian churches. And I'm going to show you um, the church at Tanahat. Um, and one of the other parts of this presentation is to show you the diversity in Armenian church architecture. One of the earliest styles was a single hall nave style. And the example here is the church at Tanahat. Unfortunately, Tanahat uh, is located in an earthquake zone. Uh, this is a floor plan of the church. Actually, uh, what's significant is that this church does not have a dome. So there is no dome in, in this church. No dome. But what is significant is the emergence of elements which we will see become very common in, in Armenian church architecture, namely the area of the apse which is usually equated with the space where the altar is located. And then uh, a larger nave or area for meeting, that is, that's where the, the uh, congregants would gather, which is gonna be the large central hall area. Uh, now, I, I'm showing you this because it's one of the earlier forms of Armenian church architecture. But uh, again, we're going to see that all that remains of Tanahat today is, is these ruins. Um, and that's primarily because it was destroyed by earthquake and has never been uh, reconstructed. However, we can uh, learn a lot by looking at even ruins of Armenian churches. And we'll go to the next slide. In this slide, we're actually looking uh, due east at the area of what was once the apse. And we can see the large cut tufa stone. That's these stones, large cut tufa stones. And you can see that some of the tufa stones have fallen away. And what do we see? What do we see exposed? We see exposed uh, one of the central tenets of Armenian church architecture, 
which is that the uh, walls, the most, the most important structural element of the walls is the core, the core area. And the core area is composed of a mixture of concrete, uh, smaller uh, tufa stones, uh, sometimes even eggs, which forms a very, very strong core. Unfortunately, even a church like Tanahat, built in a, in a quite strong way, however, uh, is subject to the strong earthquakes which are common in Armenia. So this one doesn't show us much, but it does show us the, some of the early building techniques as we move into Christian architecture. And I think this is an interesting um, slide for you to also uh, take a look at. All of the church plans that you see uh, on this slide are actually in the single hall style. That is the same style as what we just saw at Tanahat, which tells us that uh, there's an, also an important tenet in Armenian church architecture, which is that no two churches, no two Armenian churches are built exactly the same. No two churches are exactly the same architecturally. Yes, they may share uh, the single hall style, but if you look at each one of these individual churches, uh, something is different. Some are smaller, some have porches, porticos, uh, some are longer, uh, some are narrower. Um, so each one represents uh, this diversity in early church architecture. But one thing all of these share is that the dome was not yet a part of Armenian architecture. Now, as we move to the sixth and seventh century, one example of an Armenian church, which is important in our discussion is the church at Ozun which was in the dome basilica style. And this is an external view of this church. This is located in the uh, northernmost areas of the modern Republic of Armenia. But what I wanna show you is the internal side, the interior of this church. And in the interior of the church, we see expressed uh, the vaulted ceiling. So remember we looked at the arch and then the series of arches, which forms that vaulted ceiling. And this becomes a common feature of Armenian church architecture. Uh, now the vaulted ceiling ends up in this central area, which becomes the area where the dome is located. Uh, one of the things that's interesting about Armenian church architecture is that from the outside, we often don't see all of the spaces uh, on the inside of the church or the outline of the spaces on the internal side of the church. So vaulted ceilings, remember, was our second major, uh, major characteristic of the Armenian national style of architecture. Another early form of Armenian architecture was called the basilica. Uh, it's not a native Armenian form. The basilicas were actually used quite frequently in ancient Rome as either assembly halls, uh, places where legal issues would be uh, taken care of courts, public meetings, and sometimes even in commerce. But Armenians adopted the, the basilica in the early period. And this is a floor plan of an early, early basilica. And we're going to see an Armenian church, which will be very much on this plan. Now, again, uh, an important characteristic of an early basilica is the apse which would be the area where the altar is located. And, and traditionally in Armenian church architecture, uh, the Eastern apse will be the space where the altar is located. All right, now, so this, is, this was commonly used, commonly used throughout Rome, and then it was adopted by the Armenians. And let's take a look at one example of this form. This is not an Armenian one, but this is an example of a basilica as the Romans built them. And you can see it has the flat roof, right? The flat ceiling, not the vaulted ceiling. Now the advantage of a basilica, as you can see here and, and really better here is that it has two stories and therefore you can use windows on the second story to allow uh, a greater entrance of light into the building. It gives us a greater sense of space. 
So for, our, for Armenian church architecture, our example is going to be at a place called Ereruk. This is a really interesting monument. It's a very early Armenian Christian monument dating from sometime to the fourth to the early uh, fifth century. And it is in this basilica style, which was borrowed from, from the Romans and also from the Greeks. And this is the floor plan for it. And you can see that it also, at this point, we're still at a point where there is no dome. But we already see the other characteristics that we're talking about, the use of stone and the vaulted ceilings. There's one central apse, which is located in the east. And then this very large hall, which would be the area where uh, the parishioners, the people coming to church would, would, would stand. So let's take a look at this church from uh, its external view. Uh, well, the first thing you're gonna notice is, well, where's the roof, right? Well, the roof is again collapsed because of earthquakes. Uh, the Basilica of Ereruk is located right on the Armenian-Turkish border on the westernmost area of today's modern Armenia. But uh, its remains, and it still does look pretty much like this. Um, we'll take another look at it here. You can see here, the, again, the construction technique, which is finely cut tufa stone. That's the external view that you see. These are the tufa stone, which as you can see are also offset. And that offsetting also helps to prevent the lateral movement damage from the movement in the lateral movement of, uh, of earthquakes. But you can also see here, you can also see on the, uh, this area here, you can also see that construction technique. Now this church at Ereruk has been uh, studied uh, quite interestingly. It has actually Greek inscriptions. And that's because it was built before the period of the Armenian alphabet. So this is even pre-period of the Armenian alphabet, but still, but still Christian. It's very simply decorated on the outside with only a series of arcades, which are simply decorative. These are not structural. And of course, the, the entire roof area has, has collapsed because of earthquake. Again, this church would have had no dome. And here's a, a, a group of my students uh, when we visited Ereruk uh, several years ago. Um, and again, it's one of my favorite uh, spots to visit to show to the students who we use this church in our uh, Arts of Armenia class to study Armenian church architecture. And this is a close up again of the beautiful uh, tufa stone, which is finely cut in very thin layers. But you can see also that there is the area of the, you can see the area which is again is damaged, meaning the outside tufa has fallen off because of earthquakes, exposing the inner core, which provides most of the strength in Armenian architecture. And look at all the different basilica styles that existed in Armenian uh, architecture. These were all basilica styles built all over the area of uh, what is today Armenia, Karabakh, and in historic Armenia. Now, as, as I mentioned to you, so the basilica and the single hall style were uh, early styles, but Armenians began to develop new styles of architecture, church architecture, to reflect their Christian beliefs. They wanted to form spaces that were different than what were used in pagan times after a certain period. And the central worship service is the divine liturgy and the distribution of communion. So the churches reflect uh, that theological sort of outlook and purpose in the building of the churches. I already mentioned to you uh, naves, uh, altar space with usually the apse, and then also a waiting room or area which is called the narthex, and I'll show you that to you a little bit later. So now we're going to move to churches which are going to begin to use domes. And let's talk a little bit about domes before we see them actually uh, used. So there is both a physical and a theological or metaphorical uh, meaning to the dome. Um, some people see the domes as representations of heaven, perfection, the greatness of God. Uh, domes predate the period of Christianity, 
but we're going to see that they become very much preferred in Armenian church architecture. There's also the physical aspect of them, which is the cylindrical base, as I'll show you in a moment, which is the drum and on it, a con conical dome. But the architectural problem is going to be how to solve the question of supporting the weight of the dome, which is all of this stone, how can that be supported by the structure of the church? And this becomes the key issue which must be uh, solved. And Armenian architects and builders uh, developed uh, and perfected two forms. So this is sort of the uh, aspect of an of a Armenian dome. And if you've ever visited an Armenian church with a dome, you understand what I'm talking about. So the first idea is how do you uh, make that transition to help support the dome? And, and using a, a form called the pendentive, simply put, it's a, it's a architectural element, and I'm gonna outline it here, which actually looks like a triangle. But what it does is to build up a base which is perfectly circular. Therefore, the entire, the entire dome can be supported the entire dome can be supported uh, on this pendentive style base. This is gonna be very common in Armenian church architecture. Here's uh, looking at it, just kind of looking at it from a, uh, our, from a plan on the left, the pendentive. A second, an example of this is at the dome of the Cathedral of Ani, which we're gonna see uh, also in just a moment again. This is the central dome area. Unfortunately, due to earthquakes, uh, the dome itself has collapsed, but we can see very clearly that the form of support used was the pendentive. And the Cathedral of Ani is one of the outstanding works of Armenian architecture. Uh, this is a close-up view of that, uh, of that domed area. So the pendentive was one solution. A second solution is to use what is called a squinch. This fills in the corners. So you're filling in the you're filling in the corners and you're going to form an octagonal base. And that will be expressed in the dome. That will be expressed in the dome because you're going to see that the dome will be faceted and often with eight or sometimes 16 facets. Okay, so we'll see that. And the squinch also becomes uh, a very commonly used element in Armenian church architecture, especially when Armenians are using uh, the dome, which becomes very much common after the sixth to seventh century. Now, I, I chose this uh, slide for a specific reason. The dome is often used as a place which can be painted. And in this modern church, which was built in the year 2013, called the St. John the Baptist Church in the city of Abovian, uh, a very beautiful fresco uh, decorates the internal dome. And it's called, um, <clears throat> it's very much the Byzantine uh, model, the Greek Orthodox model, which is called the Christ Pantocrator. And you can see Christ depicted in the center. And it, it really is a, a, an expression of his omnipotence, his power. And this was. You know, this is a modern church, but they're using the dome for, uh, for, those, uh, for those paintings. We can also compare that to the main apse and altar area of the Cathedral of Ani, which was decorated at one time with frescoes, but which are now almost invisible. Now, you can't see much from this view, but actually, if you were to come closer, you would see figures, which are saints, and also there's the faint outline of Christ, which is also in the central area of this apse. So once again, uh, the, the use of the dome and the apse becomes important in Armenian church architecture. Um, one of the earliest uh, churches which was built with a dome is the church at Holy Etchmiadzin, translated as the church of the descent of the only begotten. Uh, built originally in the fourth century, according to Agatangelos, a chronicler of Armenian Christianity, but it was partially destroyed in the wars with the Persians and finally rebuilt in the fifth century. Let's take a look at what we have here. 
So now we see that the central element in Armenian architecture in this church is the dome in the center. And sometimes this is called uh, a centrally planned church. Meaning that the, the church itself is, is planned around the support it has for the dome. So how are you gonna support the dome? Uh, and this is expressed in the floor plan where you can see that the architects have used pillars to add extra support for the dome and also the buttressing, which is these external areas that you see here. Those help to support uh, the weight, which is coming down, the gravity, the weight of the dome, which has to be supported. Now, this is the uh, floor plan. Taking a look at it from the external view, we see that, of course, the central element is the dome. It is built completely out of tufa stone. It's been, uh, it's been modified over time. So for instance, on the left side, you see these structures, which are bell towers. Those are much later additions to the original uh, style of the church. Etchmiadzin represents uh, a style of Armenian church architecture called the niche buttress square or centrally planned church, which also becomes one of the more popular forms of Armenian architecture. And actually on the inside, uh, the inside of the church is painted with frescoes and they very much reflect the period when Etchmiadzin was in, a part of the Persian empire and re represents and that influence. So we can see also the influence of uh, various cultures in Armenian architecture. Then we move to the Cathedral of Ani, uh, which is going to be really one of the outstanding uh, examples of Armenian church architecture built during the period of the Bagratuni kingdom. So uh, we talked about two periods, did we not, of Armenian church architecture? And this is the 11th century dome basilica style. Today, unfortunately for Armenians, but uh, Ani is located today uh, on the border with Armenia, but it is today in Turkey. So it is not in the Republic of Armenia. Ani was the capital, the city of Ani was the capital of the Bagratid kingdom. Um, and this is the walls uh, that surround the citadel of Ani, very much built again with, with stone, with, with tufa stone. Um, just massive walls which surround the entire, uh, entire area. This is the floor, floor plan of the, of the church. And you can see again that the central element is going to be the dotted area, which is the dome. And we see again, massive pillars, which are going to be used to help support the dome, as well as uh, beginning to see some other decorative elements, which are going to combine to make Ani one of the, the great Armenian churches in uh, Armenian church architecture. And here is the church today. And uh, of course, you're going to say, well, where's the dome? And again, uh, unfortunately, Ani has historically been an area which has been subject to earthquakes. And the area of the dome is typically the weakest area of the church, and therefore is usually the area which is going to be um, the first to succumb to earthquakes. But let's take a look at some of the features of uh, this church, which also will illustrate some of the Armenian church style. Uh, one of them is the use of different colored tufa stone. And we can call this polychromatic, polychromatic tufa, multicolored. And you can see that it's oranges and blacks. Uh, and different shades, which give this church a very beautiful uh, external view. And then we also see these very beautiful and elegant arches, the decorative arcades, which give a very beautiful external uh, view to, to this church. This is a massive church, a very large uh, church. We're looking at it from a different view, which is uh, to the northeast or northwest, uh, we see an area which is completely collapsed. 
And this area collapsed primarily because of the 1988 earthquake. Ani is no more than uh, an hour's drive, if you could drive to Gyumri, Gyumri, which was the epicenter of the 1988 earthquake. So this church was uh, damaged quite a bit in the earthquake. Today, uh, this church is uh, not a functioning church. Uh, it is a tourist site, but it doesn't function as a church. But it is an example of one of the most beautiful 11th century uh, churches, but really one of the most beautiful of Armenian churches. The other aspect, uh, the fourth aspect of Armenian church architecture was the idea that the spaces within the church would not be would not be seen from outside the church. And it's the concept of the composite roof covering the inner spaces of the church. And I'll give you an example. Uh, this is a, a schematic of uh, the church at Ani. And you can see how uh, there are beautiful internal spaces, but from the outside, it's the composite roof that we were looking at. Another good example of this is the church at St. Ripsime which was built uh, during the Catholic Crusade of Komidas I uh, in 618 AD. And it represents a new style in Armenian church architecture. And again, this concept of the composite roof, but take a look at this floor plan. The floor plan is, is really quite elegant and very complex, representing a new style in Armenian church architecture where the architects uh, were beginning to use new uh, techniques and uh, fortunately for us, the church at St. Ripsime has survived. And this is an image uh, from the area. We can see the adding of external niches, these areas which seem to be cut out of stone. But you can see the massive, the massive dome, which is faceted, which indicates that it's built with a squinch style. Uh, this church at Ripsime is one of the most popular Armenian churches because uh, it is the spot where the Virgin Ripsime was martyred by King Dertad in the fourth century. And this is the main altar of the church. And once again, I think you get an idea of the, of the types of stone used in construction. So this is the central apse area of the eastern area and the altar in the center. Underneath, underneath the altar is actually the tomb of St. Ripsime. And this is a very popular pilgrimage site, a very popular pilgrimage site for uh, people from throughout the world to come to the church at St. Ripsime. And actually this Armenian radiating style becomes quite uh, widespread and very much used. You can see the example of Ripsime in the center here. But you can see all of these other churches are all also built in the same general style, but again, with individual differences. This probably represents uh, the most uniquely Armenian style of any of the styles that we looked at in, in the architecture. And then we come to the church at Akhtamar, the Church of the Holy Cross, which was built in the 10th century in the second period, uh, which was also built on the Ripsime plan and built during the period of the Artsuni kingdom. And probably uh, anyone that has studied architecture a little bit, Armenian architecture is familiar with this. But in the 10th century, we begin to see areas of the church, which we had not really see become very prominent. And that's an area which we call the narthex. But if you look at the main part of the church, which is here, it's pretty much, again, the radiating style. Now, this church is uh, noted for its unique features. Uh, one is that it's built on the island of Akhtamar. You can see the church. I hope you can see it here. You can see the church here. It takes a boat ride of about 15 minutes from the shore to get to Akhtamar. Today, there is uh, almost, there is no other real structure left on the island, but it was at one time the capital of the kingdom. So there should have been palaces and other uh, buildings, but those have not survived. 
And here's a, a closer view of the church at Achtamar. A few years ago, the dome was under a danger of collapse, uh, but it was uh, renovated and, and rebuilt. So today it's in better shape. But the significant aspect of this church is uh, its external, external decoration. And I've mentioned to you that architecture is kind of the first among Armenian arts, right? Well, it's, it's also first because it utilizes two other forms of art, reliefs and frescoes. And uh, what we can do when we look at the outside of the church, and today this is what the church looks like. I visited here several years ago. Uh, this is the main entrance from the west, small bell tower. And then you see all of the external decoration and that external decoration is what we're gonna look at in just a moment, uh, which are reliefs. And if you take a look at the reliefs from a, a closer view, uh, we can see that they really constitute three bands or three programs, uh, one along the upper area, one in the mid range, and then one in the lower area. Our focus will be on the lower uh, program of reliefs. Reliefs are the raised areas that if we see them closer, uh, we can see even now the reliefs of biblical, biblical importance, the reliefs of Adam and Eve on the left. It's even inscribed with the names, Atam and Eva, and there they are. And this is covering the entire outside of the church is the program of Old Testament reliefs. So again, uh, you can see them here. So the entire program, and this is uh, unique in Armenian architecture. There are some other churches which do have uh, smaller programs of reliefs, but none has the extensive reliefs here at Achtamar. On the inside of the church, it's decorated with frescoes, painting. And you can see here the main altar area uh, this wooden structure is a new structure. That's a that's a new altar, but the but the apse area is the original, which has been damaged because it was exposed for many years to the elements. But you can see then uh, the inside is completely covered with frescoes. Therefore, the church at Achtamar also represents uh, another one of the outstanding examples of Armenian architecture and the Armenian national style. And the final church that we're gonna look at uh, this evening is the church at Zavart Notes. To conclude this, this uh, presentation, we'll be looking at this one last uh, church, which takes Armenian architecture to a different level. It's called the church of the Zavart Notes, the church of the holy angels, built under the Catholicosate of uh, Nerses called the Builder in the middle of the seventh century. And it's an aisle tetraconch, but really it's a circular plan church. Imagine a completely circular church. And this is what the floor plan looks like. So it's very interesting because as you would enter into this church from the west over here, you can actually walk in either direction. But the main part of the church, the actual nave is this area. And then the main apse is, is this area. Tetra means four, conch is the, is, the, uh, is the shape of the inner area here. And we can see that actually they connect. So these apses actually connect. It's a very complex church, very beautiful church. Unfortunately, once again, it's, it's a church which was destroyed by earthquakes. This is a theoretical reconstruction, three stories, but we don't know exactly what it looked like originally. About 40 years ago, this is what you would have seen. You could just see that the, the church has pretty much been raised to the ground by earthquakes, destroyed. But about 25 years ago, actually more than that, now 40 years ago, um, the Armenian government decided to partially begin to rebuild the, the church at Zavard Notes. And here we can see that en entrance that I mentioned to you. 
the entrance into this area, which then would take you into the central area. But now you can see these rebuilt areas with these arches. Uh, and these are using original pieces of stone for the most part. Although again, some are recast in concrete. Uh, unfortunately, uh, or fortunately, it's, it's construction has stopped. And it's kind of at this point, and you can see this point means that it's just partially rebuilt and there's no plans, as far as I know, to complete the reconstruction at the church at Savart Notz. Again, it was completely destroyed by an earthquake, several earthquakes, but it represents uh, in a way the continued experimentation or ways in which Armenian architects were trying to build new, new churches. Now, to give you a comparison, uh, this church called the Amena Pergich Church of the Redeemer is an 11th century church. In the background, you actually see the Akhtamar Church, excuse me, the Ani Church, Cathedral of Ani, right? And then you see here this church, which was built on the circular plan. Once again, you can see the damage from earthquake. In particular, you can see the crack in the dome. And of course, half of the church has completely, um, completely fallen down because of the, of, of the earthquake. But there were many of these style churches built uh, throughout Armenia. And these are some examples, Zavart Notes, Ani, Bana, Liakit are only a few of the examples of Armenian church architecture. So what can we conclude when we talk about Armenian uh, architecture? It is uh, clearly one of the most distinctive forms of Armenian art uh, as, as, a, as a form of Armenian art. It's a distinctive form, the Armenian national style. Uh, and it's easily identifiable by the style. And today we associate uh, the dome uh, very much with Armenian church architecture. My presentation did not cover uh, churches built after the 11th century, but of course, uh, Armenian churches are still being built uh, throughout the world uh, in a variety of styles, some imitating the earlier uh, church styles, but some using modern building techniques, uh, which are different, but at least try to give the same uh, distinctive look to Armenian architecture. Now, most of the material I presented to you uh, is available through the uh, Arts of Armenia website, which is part of the uh, Fresno State Armenian Studies Program website. This was an initiative of Dikran Kuyumjan, Professor Kuyumjan, who created a book called The Arts of Armenia. And that's what this uh, presentation is based on, what we teach in our course. Uh, and actually you can click on it and you can go to it and you can actually see, uh, you can see the Arts of Armenia website with all of the different sites, including an architecture area. So if you'd like to explore on your own, you can, you can do so. However, there are three other very uh, important websites among many, which uh, are helpful for uh, those of you that are interested. And one is called the Research on Armenian Architecture site, which really gives a very good overview of Armenian architecture. Uh, it shows uh, restoration areas. It shows efforts in a variety of areas. It gives you the history of Armenian churches, monuments, uh, films, publications on individual monuments. A very, very interesting and very important, very important uh, site for you to visit. And another one is called Virtual Ani, which actually explores the uh, area of the city of Ani, including the cathedral. And if you click on the map, you get, you get the views of, uh, of the church here. And finally, Churches of Historic Armenia, which is again based on the Armenian Studies Program website, is a series of 153 Armenian churches photographed by the Albrecht family in various regions. And if you click on the left, you see the, the images of these churches with their historical background. So that's my uh, presentation uh, this evening on Armenian uh, church architecture. It was intended to give you uh, an introduction to 
uh, some of the forms in Armenian church architecture. Um, so I would welcome any uh, questions that you have at this time. You can use the chat area uh, of the chat area of Zoom if you would like to ask any uh, particular questions. So I'll wait a moment and see if you have any questions. Uh, and if not, I will conclude uh, this evening's uh, presentation. So this evening's uh, presentation is uh, archived and will be archived on the Armenian Studies uh, YouTube page, which is found at, um, and I'm going to put that for you. All of our lectures from all of our presentations are at this site. So you can go to that site to, uh, to see all of the uh, different lectures that have been presented by the Armenian Studies Program. Okay, uh, well now let's see if we have some questions. Did the ancient architects travel to see other structures in the East or do you think they were all homegrown? Well, this is really one of the most interesting uh, questions. Uh, and there's a lot of debate as to the extent of this, um, uh, to the extent that Armenian architects traveled not only uh, West to the Byzantine empire, but also to the East uh, because they were part of uh, historically Persia. What we do know is, for instance, when the, uh, the dome of the Church of Hagia Sophia in Constantinople was damaged by an earthquake, that the architect Turdad was invited from Armenia in the, uh, to come and to help rebuild, to rebuild that uh, dome or to repair that dome. So I really think uh, the question of influence and mutual influence especially on European architecture, and I'm talking now about Gothic architecture from the 12th century onward, uh, is explored by several um, scholars that are more informed than me in, in terms of the research uh, that have written books about uh, this mutual influence of Armenian art with neighboring uh, traditions. Um, so regarding the reliefs, were they carved directly from the Tufa stone? Yes, actually. Um, so if you if you go back and think about the church at Akhtamar, uh, actually each stone was already carved and then assembled. So if you had a figure, let's say of Adam, it could actually be four pieces. The reliefs were actually carved on the external stones. So therefore they, they, really, they really had to be thinking about how they were gonna put together those churches not only in, in the actual decoration, but then actually to, to put it together and to, and to build them. Uh, did Armenian church architecture have any influence on other churches? Uh, I suppose that means uh, again about um, influence in other areas and other uh, church architecture. And again, that's something that uh, many people have commented on, but I don't think there's a definitive answer as to that uh, relationship between Armenian architecture and other, but certainly there is there is influence in, in this in this period. Is there any information about the Armenian architect that participated in the building of uh, Saint Chapelle? Uh, that is something I would have to do some research on. I, I don't know uh, right offhand, but it's something that I can uh, take a look at. Well, thank you everyone for your attention. Uh, just a reminder that uh, tomorrow is the Arts in Motion for the College of Arts and Humanities, if you're interested in attending. And also um, make sure that you look at our website or Facebook to see our upcoming events. We have two events happening next week on April 15th and April 16th, and uh, we'll be able to, um, to join us for that. So thank you for uh, your attention and uh, we'll see you at our next event. Thank you.